I'd first of all like to thank the VSC very much for inviting me to give you a short account of our um, uh, a trip to uh, Venezuela. And uh, I apologize in advance if I actually do bore you with one or two details <laughs> about the election itself. But I think some of, the, some of that detail is, is quite, um, quite revealing in a, in, a, in a wider sense. It was an honor to be invited to go to Venezuela to be part of the, of the witness, uh, witness delegation. There were about 150 of us from all over the world, with six of us from Britain, including the uh, indomitable Richard Gott, who I was so pleased to be on the group with because I could spend four or five days basically picking his brains to tell me everything about Venezuela that I didn't know because he knows everything that needs to be known about Venezuela and its history. Um, the, uh, the, the delegation was made up of all sorts of different kinds of people, um, some activists, but they also included some, in some election officials from various parts, of the, various parts of the world, from India, South Korea, Guyana, Jamaica, people who were very interested in the, in the detail of how the election was going to be held and were in no sense going there as Chavez, Stooges or whatever. They were going there to see absolutely whether this election was to be, uh, to be free and fair. They were all apart from us. There were also large delegations from UNASUR, the Union of South American Nations, and also from Mercosur, the Common Market of the South. So there were in all about 200 of us uh, uh, based in uh, a hotel in Caracas. <coughs> And, and that's where we spent much time being briefed and being addressed by various people involved with the campaign. Initial, the initial address was given to us by um, Senora Tibisa Lucena, who's the president of the CNE, uh, a, a truly remarkable woman. Uh, in the short election campaign, she'd come under some vitriolic, abusive attack by the, by the right-wing media, including some bit of a very personal nature. And her, her house had already been, uh, uh, been attacked. Yet this woman maintained an absolutely dogged and determined impartiality in the execution of, of her role as president, a, 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 formidable, a formidable Venezuelan. And she gave us the initial opening address to, to outline the parameters of the election and what was at stake and so on. We then had for the rest of our first day some very, very detailed briefings about the electoral system itself. And uh, the Venezuelans were using a system which was very sophisticated in its construction, but very easy to use by voters and by the volunteers manning the, the polling stations. It was a system of electronic voting, which had a built-in backup of a paper trail and a paper receipt that every single voter would be given. Every single voter would, be, would, be, would have to be identified when they turned up that the name was on the poll, uh, they would be fingerprinted, they would then be allocated a polling, polling booth where they could, where they could make, uh, make their vote after their vote had been confirmed by themselves. They were then given a paper receipt to show that their vote had, had, been, uh, had been recorded. The, the, the mechanics of this and, and, the, and the human aspect of how the voting was, was, uh, was to be organized was, 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 was breathtaking in its, in, its, in its robustness and in, in its transparency. And there was, and, and, and had built into it all sorts of technical mechanisms by which there was no way the electronic vote could be defrauded, that, and there were fail safes built in as if there was a power failure or one of the machines broke down, and so on and so forth. At the end of day, the, when polls were, were to close, the, the, the electronic tally of the votes from every polling station would be sent just the once to the CNE headquarters in Caracas where all the, all the votes would be aggregated. Despite that, there was already built into the voting system a system of, a, of what they call a citizen's audit. And then in 54%, over half of the polling stations, the vote would be recounted on the day, in public, manually, out loud. And so there would be a, a recount built into over half of the votes to, to make sure the electronic vote and the paper vote actually, uh, actually tallied. Um, the, 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 the briefings may have been quite dry and technical that we received, but they were fascinating and interesting and very reassuring that this system was extremely, extremely robust. But at the end of our first day, we were, we were in a way reminded of what was really at stake in this election. At the end of the day, all those, all those who wished to go were invited to, um, to go and witness the final election rally of Nicolas Maduro. Um, if not to partake, but to, but to witness. And most of, most of the, 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 the delegation wanted to go, so we were coached down to the center of Caracas. And it was a, it was a, remarkable, it was a remarkable experience. Um, there, were, there were 
upwards of three million people on the streets of Caracas, uh, not all in one place, so it wasn't, as it were, a sea of people, but <coughs> uh, the, the, there were six or seven parallel avenues that were completely clogged, ch chock a block, with, with Chavista, with uh, Maduro supporters in the red t shirts, and they'd been there for hours. And it was singing and chanting, and, and the whole atmosphere was one of a, of, of, a, of, a, of a serious party, if I can put it like that. They, they, they were celebrating, they were honoring the memory of Chavez, the, 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 the program of Chavismo. At the end of each of the avenues, there were big screens relaying the main, main podium. Top. It, was, it was a remarkable event, and you could see in the faces and the expressions of the people there, this is the, this is the working class of Caracas coming from the chance of shanty towns into the, to take over the center of the city to, to say loudly to the world that uh, the Presidente may, may be dead, but as the slogan goes, he is still present and the, and, and, and the legacy carries on, the fight continues. On our second day, we were addressed by uh, representatives of the main political parties. Um, the Venezuelan ambassador to Brazil, uh, Maximilian Avelais, addressed us from the, from the PSUV and gave a succinct <coughs> account of, 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 the Chavez, of the Chavez legacy and the, and, and the hope for the future and how the election was going to be taking place and so on. He was followed by representatives of the opposition. There were two, but the main speaker was um, a woman called Maria Corina Machado. And she spoke... For, for, at some length to us, having carefully worked the room and pressed the flesh and tried to shake all our hands to no doubt get some photo opportunities for her friends in the right wing, in the right -wing media. And, and she spoke for about 10-15 minutes without any attempt to explain to us what the program of the opposition was. Her entire offering to us was a complaint, a series of gripes against the government, mainly about media bias against the opposition. Now, her, her contribution was long on rhetoric and short on detail, um, but it was also quite difficult to square, from our point of view, the general tenor of her speech, because we know and we've seen, been able to see for ourselves, watching the TV channels in our hotel rooms or looking at the, at the papers that were given away freely in her hotel lobby, that 80% of the media in Venezuela is privately owned, and of that 80%, Probably 90% of it is vitriolically opposed to the to the government and the government government policies. There was no sense in the in the TV stations or in the right wing press. There's not even a, not even a pretense of a balanced reportage of the, of this election. So for the opposition to claim of media bias against them, it doesn't didn't seem to to make a lot of sense. Also, the day before, it had been explained to us again in, in much detail very, very strict rules about the campaign. There were only four minutes of political campaigning allowed per day, per station, per, per political alliance, only one page per paper per day and so on. These are very, very strict advertising rules. When you think about how elections take place here, where we get a, a booth and a piece of paper and a pencil with a bit of string on the end, it, um, it, was, it was quite a lesson. On the day of the election, we were split into groups and we were sent all over Venezuela. Some groups had to go in by internal flight to the remoter regions of the country to, to, to witness the actual, the actual voting. Um, I was in a group, we went to five polling stations on the outskirts of Caracas. And they, they, were, they were interesting, they were very mixed polling stations, they were in very mixed areas, and those mixed areas reflected the kind of political, political support that they were likely to get in, the, um, in, in, that, in that particular particular area. But all the polling stations we went to um, shared some very important common features. It was extremely calm, it was very relaxed, it was very orderly, people just queuing if they had to queue, if they didn't have to queue they'd just come in and vote. People were very familiar with what they were asked to do with the voting. If they weren't, it was described to them in, 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 in simple language by the, by the, the people manning the polling stations. The, the people manning the stations, by the way, aren't local government officials or whatever. They are people from the area who were chosen at random on a kind of basis of a, a, like a jury selection process to, to actually man the stations, but they did it with enormous, and, uh, enormous enthusiasm. Um, the, the elections felt about as calm and as dramatic as next Thursday's local government elections were likely to see throughout Britain. That was the mood. <coughs> Most importantly, all the political parties have been invited to send witnesses to all the polling stations, which they did. So in the actually inside the polling station, 
there would always be three or four people sitting to one side who were the witnesses of the political parties. And they would exchange coffee and sandwiches through the day. It was all very calm and calm and relaxed. Now, members of our group, and we discovered later members of all the groups, made a point of talking to the witnesses from the opposition as to how they believed the, the, the poll was going. Not one single complaint, not one, was made to any group in any polling station by any opposition witness as to how the vote was actually taking place that day in that room. In the light of um, Enrique Capriles' complaints after the election that had been widespread intimidation and bullying and so on, well, we probably visited, I don't know, 80 polling stations throughout Venezuela without one example, one example of that. Um, and at the end of the day, we went back to a polling station to witness one of these citizens' audits that I mentioned. And we, we stood for about, a, for about an hour. It's not fantastically interesting, but it was good that we were there. And we, all the votes were from that particular polling session were counted out loud against the electronic tally written down. And uh, they tallied 100%. We, were, we weren't surprised, but we were pleased. At the end of the polling day, we went to the headquarters of the CNE to await the result. This was a big temporary structure, over air conditioned, and there were probably three or four hundred of us in the room, all the delegations, all the observers, plus visitors from abroad, plus the banks and the international media who were there waiting for the result. And we were, we were, we were taken there for eight o'clock in the evening, um, and we, we were told that the result would probably come through at about 8.30, and we could see how technically efficient the whole polling had been and how the counting would necessarily necessarily be. Um, so the mood was, 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 was relaxed and, and casual amongst all the people waiting. But at 8.30, um, there was still no sign of uh, Mrs. Lucena and the other members of the CNE executive, and then 9 o'clock came. Now, we had heard a couple of hours previously that exit polls had given Maduro a 10-point lead, which we, we kind of assumed that would probably, probably be the case. But the longer we stayed in the, in, in the CNE building, the, the, the rumours started to arrive that the lead had, hadn't been that much. It was perhaps as, as, as low as five. There was another, then there was a later rumour that uh, perhaps Maduro had only won by, by two points. Um, I, had a, I, had a, I had a private thought at that moment, and I'm sure I wasn't the only person in that crowded hall to have had it, that uh, were we in for a, a, a seismic shock here? And, and I remember well the atmosphere in Managua and Nicaragua in 1990 when, uh, as, as you'll probably recall, the Sandinistas called an election, and much to everyone's surprise, especially theirs, they lost. Now, as I said, I'm sure I wasn't the only one in the room who was thinking, are we, are we about to witness, witness something similar? Um, at about 10 o'clock, just after, Mrs. Lucena arrived with the other directors of the CNE to give the result. And she gave the result in a very factual, unemotional, sober way with a, a PowerPoint display of how the vote had been, uh, been distributed around the country. And she announced the, the result, and which, uh, as Colin said, was a, a 1.8 victory for Maduro. And it is, it, is a, it is a victory. And in this system of election, first past the post, which is a system we're very familiar with, the winner is the winner, and about which there is uh, of no dispute. But there was no sense of celebration or party, or whatever. There was perhaps a sense of, perhaps a sense of relief that y yes, the, the Maduro campaign had won by all, albeit by a slim majority. Uh, Mrs. Lucena and the other executive members left the room. An important, significant thing happened then. One of the directors of the CNE, a former president of the CNE, I believe, uh, called Vicente Diaz, he stayed behind to make a personal statement. Now, he is a, a, a pro-opposition figure, and he made a short statement where, whereby he, he then he called publicly, there and then, for a 100% for a audit of the, of the vote, because the vote had been so close. But significantly, he at the same time acknowledged the legitimacy and the accuracy of the vote that had just been announced. He did not challenge the result. What he was calling for was an audit for his own political reasons or whatever. Again, that's significant in the light of Enrique Capriles' calls and his immediate opportunist and demagogic appeals for uh, uh, a recount and for the election not to be, uh, not to be, not to be honoured. Um, and the next day, which was our last day, I'm bringing my remarks to a, a, a close now, was our last day, the report started to come in from the, from the TV news, from reports we just heard in the hotel of a wave of violence that had been unleashed by the Capriles campaign 
to not to recognize the legitimacy of this election and 